of 8.1 were given that the Jackson Timberlake wardrobe company just paid Oh, and dollar dividend, just paid being the key words. That means they gave us D0 when it says just paid. If it said next year, it would be D1. Uh, but since it just paid, if we want to get out to D1 or a future dividend, we must multiply by 1 plus G to the power. <clears throat> um, they will grow their dividend at a constant rate of 4% a year. Investors want a 10.5% return, required return. What is P0, the price today, the price in three years, and the price in 15 years? In our equations, we see that price today is equal to next dividend over R minus G whenever you have a constantly growing dividend like this one, which grows at 4% a year. Um, next dividend, D1 over R minus G. Now, how do we get to D1? We're not given it, so we have to take D0 times 1 plus G over R minus G. Again, uh, D1 is equal to D0 times 1 plus G. Similarly, P3 equals next dividend, D4 over R minus G. Um, how do we get to D4? D0 times 1 plus G to the fourth over R minus G. And then P15 is next dividend, D16 over R minus G equals D0 times 1 plus G to the 16th over R minus G. The other way to calculate these if we want to is we can take P0, if we're given P0, and just um, since we do have a constant growth rate, the price will grow at that same 4% rate and we can just plug P0 in there times 1 plus G to the third to get P3 and times 1 plus G uh, to the 15th if we want to do it in an alternate way. So two ways to calculate these. We'll go over the first way. Price today is a buck 95, um, which is today's dividend just paid, D0, times 1 plus G, 1.04, gets us out to D1, which we want here, over a required return minus the growth rate, and we get $31.20 per share um, for P0. P3 is uh, 1.95 times 1.04 to the fourth over R minus G, and we get 35 tennis share. And P15 is D16, 1.95 times 1.04 to the 16th over 0 0.105 minus 0 0.04. We get 56.19 a share. Again, we can uh, take this if we want to get P3. We can take uh, 31.20, alternate way to calculate it, <clears throat> times 1 plus 0 0.04 to the third, and that should give us the same answer for P3. Um, and that will get us there in a different way, but it should give you the same answer of $35.10. So two ways to do these problems. Those are your answers to problem 8.1. In problem 8.2, we have Hailstorm Inc. Next dividend will be $2.04 per share, 4.5% growth rate, um, stock sells for $37. What is the required rate of return? Again, we have a constant dividend uh, growth model problem. So P0 equals D1, next dividend over R minus G. Um, and I can switch these around to solve for R. Um, R is equal to D1 over P0 plus G, uh, dividend yield plus capital gains yield. So uh, to calculate the required rate of return, I take $2.04, which is my D1. I take uh, $37, which is my P0. I add the growth rate, constant growth rate of 4.5%, and I get a required return of 10.101, 10 10.0135%. Here's your answer to problem number two. In problem 8.3, uh, we have the same givens as problem uh, number two, but we want to find what are these two components of required return. So what is the dividend yield is the question, what is the capital gains yield? Total return is broken into two pieces. So we simply uh, look at the 2.04 over $37, that will be our D1, next dividend over today's stock price, and we get 5.5135%. 5.5135% 5 .5 is your dividend yield, and 0.045 is your capital gains yield, 4.5%. Add those two pieces together and we get the answer to the prior problem, which was 10.0135%. Here's your answer to problem number three. In problem 8.4, we have a given Kane Corp will pay a $3.56 per, uh, per share dividend next year, key next year. That means they're giving us D1. Uh, going to be growing at a constant rate, so we want to use the constant dividend growth model. G is 3.75%. You require an 11% return on your investments. What is today's stock price give it with these givens. Our equation again is the constant dividend growth model, P0 equals next dividend over R minus G. So it's very simple, I take the 356 
as next dividend, because it says dividend next year, divided by required return R of 0.11 minus 0.0375G, and we get a stock price today of $49.10 per share. And there's your answer to problem 8.4. In problem 8.5, tell me why company will maintain a 3.9% growth in dividends. Uh, their dividend yield is 5.9%. Uh, what is the required return on this investment? Again, we're going to use the constant dividend growth model because we have a constant G. Uh, D1 over R minus G, we can break that into required returns equal to D1 over P0 plus G2 components of required return, you always want to remember our dividend yield plus capital gains yield. So this problem becomes very simple. Percent R is just dividend yield of 5.9% plus uh, constant G, capital gains yield of 3.9%, 0.098, add them together. So our answer is 9.8%. That's the answer to problem 8.5. In problem 8.6, we have a company stock selling for $63 a share today, P0, and required rate of return is 10.5%. Total return uh, is equally divided between dividend yield and capital gains yield, as we know. What is the dividend today? So again, we're going to use the constant dividend growth model, because um, we have a constant G in this problem. Um, P0 equals next dividend over R minus G, switch that around to solve for required return equals dividend yield plus capital gains yield. That says that this 10.5% um, percent return, required return, is equally split half and half to dividend yield and capital gains yield. So that means we have 5.25% in D1 over P0 and 5.25% in G. Um, equally split. So, and then uh, we can also then backtrack, uh, once we find D1, we can backtrack and find D0 by dividing uh, D1 by 1 plus the growth rate, 5.25%. So, um, dividend yield is 5.25, as we said above, G, uh, capital gains yield is 5.25%. And I know that uh, D1 over P0, so right here, dividend yield over price, is equal to 0 0.0525 from above. So we can see that right from above. And uh, we can then solve for cross multiply and solve for D1. D1 then equals $3 and about 31 cents per share. Uh, to backtrack then and calculate D0, I take D1 and divide it by 1 plus the growth rate, 1.0525, resulting in a D0 today of $3.14 per share. And there are your answers to problem number six. In problem 8.7, we have Estes Park Corp with a constant uh, dividend payment of $7.80 per share um, for 13 years. And then they stop forever. Key point there, stops forever. Uh, if the required return is 11.2%, what is today's stock price P0? Now the question is, which of the three stock valuation models do we use? Do we use the wildly fluctuating stock valuation model, where something changes wildly? Uh, that might be the dividend, it might be the R, it might be the G. Do we use the uh, zero growth model, where there is no growth in the dividend, G equals zero? Or do we use, and that continues forever, so that's a dividend that must continue forever. In this case would be 780 forever. So is that the model we want to use, or do we want to use the constant dividend growth model, which shows a constant G of some rate? Uh, so if we look at this, I don't see any constant G here in the givens anywhere. Uh, I don't see a dividend that goes on forever, so I can't use model 2, so I must use the wildly fluctuating stock valuation model. Uh, the question is, is this really wildly fluctuating? Uh, so I encourage you to draw a timeline on all problems from chapter 6 through chapter um, 11. Uh, in this case, we have 0 today, but then 780, 780, 780, 780, 780, all the way out. 13 years, 780, 780, 780, then 0. So the question is, are we wildly fluctuating? 780, at first glance, it looks like it's not fluctuating at all. But out here, it goes down to nothing. 
Um, so yes, we are wildly fluctuating, and yes, we're going to use a wildly fluctuating stock valuation model. Because it goes 780, 780. Now, if you notice that, that all those 780s uh, form an annuity, same amount each year. So I can do this problem one of two ways. I can take the uh, traditional uh, or general uh, stock valuation model, which I happen to call wildly fluctuating, D1 over 1 plus R, D2 over 1 plus R squared, D3 over 1 plus R cubed, dot, 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 D13 over 1 plus R13, plus P13 over 1 plus R to the 13th, and P13 takes care of all future dividends. In this case, that's equal to D14 over R minus G, and P14 is zero. Um, so that wipes that out. So I'm just left with a 13-year annuity, so I would choose to, to avoid mistakes because I could make 13 errors doing these calculations plus an addition error, 14 errors. I'm just going to use the present value annuity to calculate today's stock price. Present value means today. Um, C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R, present value annuity. For C, I'm going to plug in $7.80. For R, I'm going to plug in 0.112. And T, I'm going to plug in 13. If I do the math there, I get uh, today's stock price of $52.12. Uh, alternately, I could go with uh, the wildly fluctuating model and plug in 780 over uh, 1.112, 780 over 1.112 squared, 780 over 1.112 cubed, all the way out to 780 over 1.112 to the 13th should get the same answer. Again, lots of math and lots of addition. If you want to do that, I'd rather do the present value annuity formula. There's your answer to problem number seven. And problem number eight, we're given that Marine Inc. has preferred stock a preferred stock issue that pays a dividend of $3.50 per share in perpetuity. What does in perpetuity mean? Forever. So again, we have to ask ourselves, which stock valuation model do we use to solve for this one? We're trying to solve for required return. The stock sells for $85 a share. Do I use a wildly fluctuating stock valuation model where either the G or the R or the D fluctuates? Uh, do I use the zero growth model where we have the same uh, amount of dividend forever, or do I use the constant dividend growth model where I have a constant G? In this case, it's very simple. It's uh, the perpetuity model. It's the zero growth model. It's the same dividend forever. So when I see the word forever, I'm going to use this equation D over R. We recall from chapter 6, present value, that perpetuity is C over R. So you can see the similarity. It's exactly the same equation. In this case, I just plug the D in for C. Uh, the constant dividend is $3.50 per year forever. The stock price today is $85. That gives us a required return of 4.1176%. And there's your answer to problem number eight. In problem 8.9, we have Reggie Allen Blue Corp. Each pay a dividend of $3.25 per share next year. Key point next year. Uh, percent growth rate is 4% per year, and the required return is 8%, 11%, and 14%. So 8% for red, 11% for yellow, and 14% for blue corp, respectively. What is the price of the stock for each company? What's the relationship between stock price and percent required return? Uh, again, since we have a constant dividend growth rate, we're going to use constant dividend growth model. So today's stock price equals next dividend over R minus G. And it says uh, we're given next dividend, so we're going to use that. No need to multiply by anything. So red price today is 325, uh, which is D1 divided by its uh, required return of 8% right here, uh, minus G, the uh, capital gain yield or growth rate 0.04. For Red Corp, I get a stock price of $81.25 per share. Uh, do the same thing for Yellow 325, but now we're going to use the 11% required return for Yellow minus the G of 0.04, and I get a stock price of $42.42, 42 cents, 43 cents, if I round up. And for Blue Corp, um, take that same dividend D1 over R minus G. Uh, R being 14% this time for Blue Corp, and I get a stock price of $32.50 per share for Blue Corp. So what conclusion can we make looking at these R's as they go up in the stock prices? Well, as percent R goes up, stock price goes down.
Those are answers to problem number nine. In problem 8.10, we have given that Schenkel has 550,000 shares outstanding. Stock sells for $39 per share. Straight voting, not cumulative voting. So straight voting, keywords there. How much will it cost you to buy a seat on the board of directors? So the equation is 50% of shares outstanding plus one share. Um, to take over the top times the dollar stock price. So I take 50% of the 550,000 shares. Um, equals 275,000 shares, plus one share, 275,001 shares, times $39 a share, I get a total of 10,725,039. is your answer to problem eight, 10. In problem 811 now, Schenkel uses cumulative voting, so a little change from the last problem. Uh, 550,000 shares still outstanding, stock sells for $39 a share. What is the cost to buy one seat if four directors are to be elected under cumulative voting? Key. So the formula for cumulative voting is 1 over n plus 1, turn that where n is the number of directors to be elected. Um, turn that into a percent, add one share times the dollar stock price. So one over four plus one, because we have uh, four directors being elected in this case. Uh, to make that fraction one fifth, turn that into a percent, 20 percent of all the shares outstanding. So 20 percent of 550,000 is 110,000 shares, plus one share. I need one more to guarantee myself seat on that board of directors times $39 a share, 110,001 shares, times $39 a share, I get 4,290,000 and $39. And there's your answer to problem number 11. And problem number 8.12, Perfect Rose Company has earnings of 235 a share, and their price to earnings ratio is 18 times. What's the appropriate stock price in that case? And what happens if the PE is 21? Our equation is earnings per share times PE ratio equal dollar price per share. So I take my 235 EPS uh, times 18 times, I get a stock price of $42.30 per share. If that um, PE ratio uh, goes up to 21, I get a stock price of $49.35 per share. You can see as the PE ratio goes up, the stock price goes up. There's your answer to problem number 12. In problem 813, we have Twitter Me Inc. has sales of 2.7 million. Their benchmark PE ratio, or PS ratio, I should say, price to sales ratio, is 4.3 times. Uh, what is their stock price if 130,000 shares are outstanding? if the price to sales ratio is 3.6 times. So if we change that up, what happens to the stock price? So the equation is stock price in dollars equal to sales per share uh, times price to sales ratio. So I take 2.7 million in sales dollars divided by 130,000 shares times 4.3 times price to the initial price to sales ratio. And I get a price of $89.31 approximately. And that's uh, P0, price of stock today. For the 3.6 benchmark price to sales ratio, I take the sales per share, 2.7 million divided by 130,000 shares. This time I'm going to multiply by 3.6 times, and I get a um, stock price of $74.77 per share. And there are your answers to problem number 13. Problem 14 we're going to give you a challenge question. Um, this will use the wildly fluctuating stock valuation model, or the general stock valuation equation, uh, as the author likes to put it. Um, when something is fluctuating wildly in the problem, that's the equation we're going to use. Bayou Okra Farms just paid a $2.65 per share dividend. Um, the growth rate on this dividend is 4.5% per year. Investors want a 15% return for three years a 13% for the next three years, and then 11% thereafter. Find today's stock price. So this is a, a pretty challenging problem. 
Um, I'm going to suggest you come out here and find P6 first, take care of all future dividends, then P3, then P0. Uh, the thing is fluctuating wildly is the R. Um, so find P6. We're going to put that in at the end of the equation when we find P3. Uh, and, and we'll have a P6 out here along with a D6. And then when we find P0, it'll look exactly like this, and we'll put a P3 in here at the end. So P6 equal to what? Next dividend over R minus G. So find um, D7 first and divide that by R minus G using the last R out here. And then find P3 and then find P0. There's your challenge question number 814. In our next challenge question 819, you're given that Monson Corp will grow dividends 30% a year for three years, 20% for one year, and then 6% thereafter. So first three years, we have um, a growth rate of 30% per year. First three years. Uh, next, three year uh, next year, 20%. and then a 6% um, thereafter. Uh, required return is 10%, and today's stock price is $86 per share. Required return through the uh, entire project is 10%. Um, what is the D1 is what we're looking for. What is D1? Next dividend or projected dividend is what we're looking for. Once again, we're going to use a wildly fluctuating stock valuation equation. P0 equals D1 over 1 plus R. D2 over 1 plus R squared. D3 over 1 plus R cubed. D sub T over 1 plus R to the T plus P sub T over 1 plus R to the T. And how we find which one to go for, we look at the last time uh, the growth rate changes and uh, step back one year. So it changes out here in year five, so we're going to step back here and calculate price at time four, and that will take care of all future dividends after year four. P4 equals D5 over R minus G, so, uh, and you want to do that in terms of D0, okay, because we want to ultimately solve for D1. So you want to solve P4 in terms of D0, D so you're going to get P4 equals uh, some number times D0, and then uh, we're going to plug that P4 in here uh, at the end of this wildly fluctuating equation. So whatever answer you get there, you're going to put in here for P4. And then uh, then we're going to go back to uh, P0 and calculate it uh, according to the standard wildly fluctuating equation and do uh, P0 in terms of D0 also. So you, you get uh, P0 equals $86 on this side of the equation equals some factor times um, D0. And then you can calculate D0, and then calculate D1. D1 is simply D0 times 1 plus G. And there's your challenge question number two.